Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. When I received the remarkable Paper Pro Move and I made my first video and some other subsequent videos, there was one question that was kind of repeating itself above the rest of them. I've been addressing that question in comments and in a Q&A video as well. However, I wanted to give you guys a proper type of a look at how I can use my deep guides, my daily organizer and a meeting planner, hyperlinked PDF documents that you can find on mydeepguide.com shop on the remarkable Paper Pro Move because they are designed to work seamlessly on devices such as Remarkable 2, Remarkable Paper Pro. They work really, really well, but the Paper Pro Move is not only smaller, but it has a different aspect ratio as well. So let's check that out. All right, so here we have my daily organizer 2025 and I'm just going to show you like normal running as you normally have it for those who are familiar with MDO, for those who are not. It's a hyperlinked PDF uh, file that is there to help you organize all of your yearly or quarterly or monthly or weekly or finally daily needs and you have that throughout the entirety of the year and you can easily cycle through all of these things and go back and forth and all of these kinds of really good things. So normally you would make your entries and let's say in a yeah 10th of October which is the day when I'm filming this you would make your you know plans that you have in your daily planner so you have like make test entries on Remarkable 2, synchronize with the server, check entries blah 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 and then you have also the schedule here so and maybe some daily notes as well for comparison sake for this video. So this is how it's supposed to normally look like and function and as you've seen a lot of you guys asked can MDO work on Remarkable Paper Pro Move and will I be making a custom version for Remarkable Paper Pro Move? Now, I won't be making a custom version for Remarkable Paper Pro Move for one very simple reason. Out of four products that Remarkable has, only one of them has this screen format. Why is that important? Well, it's important because while this format fits on all of the devices, it doesn't perfectly fit on Remarkable Paper Pro Move. If I were to customize a format to fit somehow the Remarkable Paper Pro Move, that in itself wouldn't solve the main problem, which is the really narrow aspect ratio, making the visibility of icons really, really small because it's a small device and it's a very narrow. Thing. But moreover, that version would then look completely awkward and you wouldn't have a proper way to use it on the majority of devices such as the Remarkable Paper Pro, Remarkable 2 and Remarkable 1. Instead what I'm going to show you in this video is what you can do and how you can effectively use MDO and MMP, you can use that to apply to MMP equally well, on the Remarkable Paper Pro to overcome that aspect ratio, narrowness and small size limitations. Here you can clearly see the issue. The functionality of the document is totally fine. So everything works normally as it would. So you can see you can go to the months and you can go to the weeks and basically yeah, navigate normally and you can do everything that you would normally do with the yeah, addition of blinky reflections that refresh rates that take uh, quite a bit more time than they do on here. Uh, but that's a yeah, gallery tree and paper pro kind of limitation. However, the biggest problem here is, as you can see in this view, even though everything functions properly, it's really, really tiny. There's really very little that you can do about that. But the major problem here is that if we go to any of the regular pages, let's say this one that's filled in and it's synchronized, you can see that you have a lot of unused space. I went ahead and did a lot of testing and checking things out so that I can bring you the yeah, best use case scenarios and tips and tricks on how to most effectively use documents like MDO and MMP on a Remarkable Paper Pro Move. I'm going to be covering both portrait and landscape orientations and yeah, different type of suggestions and tips and tricks on how to get the best out of 
each of the modes. When we're talking about the portrait orientation, the number one thing that you're going to want to do is to actually go to more menu, adjust view, and then go to adjust view again, and go to fit custom view. Neither fit width nor height will offer you the best results for the portrait view. Instead, you go to custom view and then you can use your pinch to zoom motion. And what you're looking for is you're trying to fit basically these arrows on the left and right, which indicate the borders of the document as close as possible and as equal as possible to the sides themselves. So now when you're done with that, then you can use your two finger gesture and press and hold and start moving up or down to adjust a little bit up or a little bit down. Now you won't be able to do too much, but it's, you know, it's there if you want it. Now, when you hit set, it's going to fit it to the set zoom that you've set it. And that alone already improves things quite a bit. But there's a second benefit to this as well, which we will shortly see. Now, the second advice that I can give you is that for a small device like this, I would always use pinch to zoom to make entries and then move away. What does that mean? Well, that means that you can simply use the pinch to zoom uh, gesture here to zoom into the area that you are interested in. And let's say that I want to make some entries around here. Now that I zoomed in, I actually am utilizing the full area of this screen and I can make comfortable entries. Now here's a little bit of a, a tip that you can use and you can use it in different ways and on Remarkable Paper Pro Move it's actually really really cool once you know your way around the document. It simply understands like your initial movement. What does that mean? If you do two fingers on a screen and you start moving horizontally, right? It's going to be locked to horizontal movement giving you quite nice control. Similar thing is that when you're already zoomed into this column here, because MDO is mostly organized in daily planner, for example, in columns, that means that you can use the two finger gesture to simply slide up and down to get to the areas that you want. And that makes it a lot more easier to kind of navigate here, make your entries in that zoomed in state. What about if you want to kind of rearrange? Well, there's a little trick that you can again use with the two fingers. Once you make initial contact, you don't move left or right, but you move diagonally. So once I start moving diagonally, that's going to give me the ability to kind of move around and adjust this. So you can use these three to navigate very, very freely in this zoomed in state. And because Remarkable Paper Pro Move is actually really, really fast at zooming, it's actually very, very comfortable and easy to use. And the deghosting just gets rid of the yeah, ghosting remnants. Once you're done with the entries and you wanna zoom out, this is where that custom fit benefit comes again, because all you need to do is you need to start zooming out and it will automatically snap to your already set or preset a zoom state. So once you've set it, you don't actually lose it. You can always zoom in to the area that you want, make entries that you want, and then zoom out to the preset area that you've already done. One final piece of advice is applies to yeah, both landscape and portrait orientation and actually applies to uh, Remarkable Paper Pro as well as Paper Pro Move. Because of the way that Remarkable yeah, as a platform handles contrast, it's not really that great, but they do have in adjust view, they do have an option of increased contrast to adaptive uh, or full page. What I do recommend for you is when you're using MMP or any kind of fillable document that has lines or thin type of content, you want to go and set it to full page because you can see how it actually pops the lines and pops the contrast in a much, much better way. There's a negative side to it because you will lose the grayscale on the, yeah, the user interfaces. And again, this is a problem with the calibration of contrast. Unfortunately, there's not much that you can do about that because as you can see, if you go to increase contrast to adaptive, uh, we get back the grayscales here, which is nice, but you lose the details in daily notes, daily diary, and you can see the differentiation between full hour and half hour lines is really not that good, as well as, you know, the poppiness of the lines and uh, readability of these lines. So 
in general, yes, you do lose the grayscale, but you gain so much more because everything becomes a lot more visible and a lot more usable. Now, what about when we unlock the orientation and flip it to a uh, landscape orientation? Well, let's explore that. In this mode, you will want to use the fit to width mode. So again, you go to adjust view, adjust view again, and this time you will go to fit to width. This will give you most of real estate of the screen and it will give you exceptionally good readability. And here again, you can start applying the same type of uh, scrolling tactics with your two fingers. You can just simply scroll to where you want and you can still utilize the same pinch to zoom tactics that we've uh, explored previously, except that this time it will give you more of a zoomed in state. What I found out when I was testing this out is that when I was working with the uh, daily plan view here, for example, because it's divided into columns, that itself lends itself much, much more uh, prone to kind of use in a portrait mode, because you could zoom in on a column and simply scroll up and down. Where I found the landscape format to use to kind of function really, really well is in daily notes, weekly notes, and general notes themselves. And in that mode, I can use it as I normally would a notebook of any kind. And that becomes really, really comfortable and really, really easy to kind of handle around and kind of work with this. The problem here is that once you do adjust the width, you are going to lose your set kind of zoom. So the mode that I found myself mostly kind of using is fit to width because it will automatically go here when I need it to. And when I'm in portrait mode, the overall view with the set view, while it is useful, it doesn't really provide that big of a difference because if I'm making entries and doing all of that kind of stuff, it, I'm, I'm going to be zooming in anyway. So basically the workflow that I had was fit to width in all of the modes, increased contrast to full page on all of the modes, using the pinch to zoom on, uh, yeah, in the portrait mode to basically center around a column that I'm working in and then simply go up and down, do what I need to. And then I can just easily scroll the same type of thing and then fill out the schedule when I need to do that. And once I'm done with that, then I can just go into landscape mode, zoom out, fit to width, go here, go to my daily notes and start making the entries as I normally would. So this type of workflow offered the most amount of flexibility and most amount of, um, let's say, non-intrusiveness of using uh, MDO and in MMP uh, on the Remarkable Paper Pro Move. After spending a little bit of time with this, I actually find it extremely easy to use, provided that you use this type of workflow. And the cool thing about it is that because you're using the same document on both of the devices, everything that I've done on the Remarkable Paper Pro Move, when I took my Remarkable 2 and loaded the same document, it was synchronized and all of the entries and all of the changes are reflected here as well. So that way you have the perfect interoperability between the different types of devices. And while the MDO itself is maybe not made for this format, Using this type of workflow, it allows you the freedom to effortlessly jump between Remarkable 2, Remarkable Paper Pro, and your portable Remarkable Paper Pro Move, and still use MDO or MMP as you see fit. Well, there you go. That's how you can use MDO and MMP on the Remarkable Paper Pro Move. And to be quite honest, I was surprised once I started using this type of a workflow, how efficient and how easy actually it was. Because to me, in my head, at least when I was thinking about it, it sounded and it looked in my head like, oh, too much of a bother and things like that. But 
To be honest, the pinch to zoom and the reactivity of the Remarkable Paper Pro Move, that's the one that makes it worthwhile. If that didn't work as precise and as quick as it does work on Remarkable Paper Pro Move, then yeah, then it would have been a bother, but thankfully it's not. And that means that you can seamlessly use the same MDO that you're using on your Remarkable Tube or Paper Pro, you can use it on a Remarkable Paper Pro Move, mix and match, mix and match, and have a truly portable companion that's there to jot down all of your thoughts, organizational needs, or your meeting planning notes, plans, minutes, or whatever it is. That I think makes Remarkable Paper Pro move really, really usable. For example, if you're using the yeah, My Deep Guide meeting planner and you're just using this device to jump from a meeting to a meeting, jotting down things. And then when you go back to your main office, jump onto Remarkable Paper Pro, where you have a really, really large estate. And then you start finessing all of that and processing all of that data further as you see fit. It actually surprised me because I didn't think that it would be able to do it. But with this type of workflow, for me at least, it does work really, really well. Let me know how this works out for you and if you do have any other types of hints, tips and tricks for other remarkable users who are also using the My Daily Organizer or My Deep Guide Meeting Planner. And if you're not familiar with these products, well, head on over to mydeepguide.com shop or you can check out the dedicated playlists on the channel and you can familiarize yourself with both what my daily organizer and my deep guide meeting planner are. And don't forget that my daily organizer 2026 is already available. So you can go ahead to mydeepguide.com shop, purchase it and enjoy using it on all of your devices. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.